Hey, Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours. This is your Monday Minutes. Um, today, uh, I'm going to do a little bit about uh, MIs. Um, you know, I don't do a lot about EKGs on the Monday Minutes because there's so much information out there that has been covered already and a lot of other blogs and EMS educators that really focus and their sort of um, niche is focusing on MIs and 12 leads and things like that, right? So I don't go too much into it here. There's a lot more on, on other parts of the websites that I run, uh, including TurboMedic, that uh, go much more in depth, right? But I thought that today's Monday Minute, what I'd like to do real quick, just to give some key information to look out for and to think about when you're assessing your patient and you're looking at your EKGs or your 12 leads, okay? So that's what my goal is today uh, for the Monday Minutes, all right? Now, again, like I said, you guys pretty much know this stuff already, okay? This is really just a uh, an overview, right? And I want to give you these primary points, all right? So just keep that in mind, all right? Do the Monday Minutes, and not a lot of time. So uh, I just want to kind of go over you know, these key areas, all right? So we talk about chest pain, right? The most common thing you're going to see in an acute MI, right? Um, they're going to be complaining about discomfort. It may, they may describe it as a burning, as a pain, heaviness, uh, pressure, or even squeezing, okay? Now, you might have angina, right? That angina equivalent. All right, and that can include things like neck pain, jaw pain, or epigastric pain. All right, the patient might be complaining of, of nausea, being tired, some shortness of breath, or some shortness of breath when they exert themselves. All right, things to think about. Okay, now what about the 12 lead? I'm not going to give you pictures of EKGs here, I made it a big 12 lead class, but just remember these sort of key areas here, right? Your inferior leads, uh, 2, 3A, and VF. Your septal leads, V1 and V2, your anterior lead, uh, V3, V4, your lateral leads, uh, V5, V6, 1, and AVL, and your posterior, which are leads v, V1, V2, V3. Now, these are what you're going to be looking for when you're looking for those ST elevations, those ST depressions, reciprocal changes, things like that, right? You can do something like use the uh, uh, things like Sally. Right, using S for septal, A for anterior, L for lateral, and I for inferior to sort of help you remember those different leads, right? Um, and where you're looking out for those elevations. All right, so just quick tip there. I think I did a Monday Minutes on just that a little while ago. All right, but just check the, these are the leads that you're looking out for when you're uh, doing your 12 lead assessment. All right, now, what if you got that greater than one millimeter? Right. So patients that you're going to suspect having, having an MI that have chest pain and they have that 12 lead that, that is reflecting a greater than or equal to, let's say, one millimeter of ST segment elevation or, okay, uh, even a left bundle branch block. And you're going to want to see the ST elevation in two or more contiguous precordial leads, all right? So if you see that, that greater than one millimeter uh, ST elevation in two or more contiguous leads, or you see uh, a new left bundle branch block, you need to take these patients to the hospital, okay, uh, uh, immediately, all right? There's, you've got an MI going on, and this is when you, they need more intervention that we can provide them in the field. So what's our time limit, right, our timeline? Well, you hear, I'm sure you've heard the phrase, time is muscle, right, especially when you're talking about MIs. Try to get your e scene to the time you actually take that 12 lead. All right, the time you get to the scene and you get that 12 lead you know, uh, assessed is less than eight minutes, all right? And you should really keep your, your on-scene time less than 15 minutes, all right? You want to get them to the hospital, all right? So, you know, you guys get that chest pain call, no matter how old that patient is, no matter what the surrounding complaint is, they're complaining of chest pain, bring the monitor into the house or into the apartment or location wherever you are bring it in so you can get that 12 lead right there on scene and make the determination if they've got that elevation that we've talked about a little you know a couple minutes ago all right and they need to get to 
the PCI center, all right, for more intervention, that, like I said, than what we can provide out in the field, all right? Just things you've got to, you know, got to kind of focus on. This is just key areas, right? So putting this all together can really help you, I think, kind of narrow it down and get you off the scene and get you moving, all right? Now, we talked a little bit about that left bundle branch block, right? Now, if you've got that patient, they're having that acute MI, and you've, you've got that left bundle branch block going on, they really are at an increased risk, risk for a, a poor outcome, okay, unless you really start getting them, uh, uh, you know, uh, aggressively managed, all right? So that new bundle branch block, left bundle branch block, it really can be that marker for a left anterior descending aria, that LAD, okay, you get those widow makers, right? Getting that artery occluded, and a, you're going to have a significant portion of that left, left ventricle and that's in jeopardy, okay? So that's when you really got to start thinking about that left bundle branch block. And this is when we go back to what we talked about a little bit earlier. You suspect of that left bundle branch block, you got to keep that scene time down, you know, less than 15 minutes and get that EKG in less than eight minutes. So you can determine if this is what's going on with the patient, okay? Even if, or suspect that this is what's going on with the patient. All right. So, guys, again, these are very basic. And, and again, I'm sure a lot of you li looking at this uh, Monday Minutes know a lot of what I'm talking about already. My goal, of course, on the Monday Minutes, guys, is always to kind of hammer home the basic information and the basic knowledge that we already know so that we can kind of regurgitate it in our minds and bring it back up when we need it the most. And when you've got a patient having an MI, you need to get these key points I'm mentioning today, get them into front of your mind, remember that scene time, remember those areas of, of 12 lead assessment that you're looking at, remember that that one millimeter elevation, the left bundle branch, and the importance of recognizing the left bundle branch, right? And the importance of recognizing that ST elevation and what, what you've got to take care of when it comes to that, all right? So just a couple more little quick um, take homes for you guys, all right? You got a patient, that has a normal EKG but they're still complaining in chest pain, you know what? The fact that you got an on scene 12 lead that looks normal to you, or if the, the monitor interprets it as being normal, you should never really use that to convince a patient or to let the patient know that their condition is stable, right? The chest pain can still be a, a, a marker of them having MI, okay? Greater than 50% of acute MIs will actually initially present as normal EKG. So you got that patient on scene who's presenting with a normal EKG. You, you convince them to go to the hospital. On the way to the hospital, you can look down at that 12 lead, repeat the 12 lead in, in route, and guess what? You can be having that elevation. You can be having that suspected left bundle branch block going on. Okay, don't use that as, as a marker to say, well, you're fine, it's not really cardiac related. Okay, remember, we're treating the patient, we're not treating the monitor. Okay, couple other quick points, guys. Patients that you have that might have an anterior or septal, uh, anterior septal MI, right? These are patients that end up being at a risk for um, developing a heart block. Okay, so one thing you might want to consider when you have a patient that's got that anterior septal MI, go ahead and put pacer pads on them. So if they do go into a block, you're ready to act and treat them, uh, uh, you know, with, with the pacing pads if need be. Okay, uh, one last quick thing, guys. Patients who've got that inferior MI, now this is something I'm sure you've heard about, especially if you've been out there for a while, that right-sided that right -sided MI, right? Patients with the inferior MI, okay, they can be at risk for that right ventricle infarct. Okay, so keep in mind they, that that's a possibility. So use nitroglycerin with caution, all right? Because um, those patients are really prone to get uh, hyper hypotension, all right, um, and you might actually end up patients that have that inferior MI are going to want are, are going to be needing a large amount of of uh, IV boluses, normal saline boluses. Okay, of course you're going to follow your local guidelines. And those always guys treat them as you know as your your medical director dictates and what's available to you in your system and in your drug bag on that ambulance. Okay, again these are the quick points. These are key areas that I think are, are important for you to remember when you get that patient with chest pain. And the key things that you're looking for, the key pain things I've mentioned, 
the uh, angina equivalents that I mentioned, the leads that I'm talking about, and the importance of your scene management time. Manage that scene, guys. You get that chest pain, you've got that FT elevation, manage your scene time. Keep it now or keep it under 15 minutes. Get them to the PCI center so that they can get treatment that we certainly can't apply into the field, at least not yet anyway, in most areas, okay? So I hope you can use these Monday Minutes, guys. You've got some tips for MI infarctions and whatnot on your own, send them over to me. I'd love to hear them. I'd love to share them with the membership as well, okay? Guys, if you enjoy this type of stuff, you want to really build your knowledge base and really build upon what you're doing out there in the field as an EMS provider, I encourage you to go check out TurboMedic.com. This is really an exclusive member-only website where there is much, much more than just e additional EKG training and 12 lead training there. There's a lot of training on a lot of different clinical and operational aspects when it comes to being a knowledgeable and prepared EMS professional. So go check that out and check out the benefits you can get being a member of Turbo Medic On Demand. You just click this graphic right here, click the little link that says click here to access, and it'll shoot you over there. You can take a look at the uh, member benefits there. All right, guys, as always, uh, like I mentioned, any tips of your own you want to share, send them on over to me. My email is contact at emsofficehours.com. And I hope until next week, as always, you're going to stay safe and keep visiting the blog, guys, as well. Let me know what you think about this. Uh, share this video on Facebook. Tweet it out and uh, help spread the word about these Monday Minutes. Until next week, guys, as always, like I said, stay safe.